Hello, and welcome to the Texas Municipal League Intergovernmental Risk Pool Loss Prevention Webinar. Our topic today is ladder safety. My name is Chris Remert, and our presenter today is Clarence Graves. Uh, hello, Chris. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you, Clarence. Uh, Clarence has been with the pool since 2002 and uh, has visited with members throughout the state in different areas and has also presented training programs, one of them being ladder safety. And uh, so we wanted to bring this topic to you so you could learn something and maybe have some important reminders about this topic. Uh, a primary goal for today is to help avoid accidents and injuries. Yes, Chris, uh, and also it could be fatalities. One of the things I like to always talk about when I talk to different people about ladder safety, they always reply, well, it's common sense. I say, well, it may be common sense, but it's not common practice. And that's what we're going to expound on today. We're going to talk about some common practices uh, that will make good common sense and achieve excellent results. And this following picture here, which we have some different photos throughout this presentation, is not a common sense practice. No, it's mm. not. Uh, what I usually like to do is I like to take pictures like this and show and ask the audience what is wrong with this picture. And what is wrong with this picture? Uh, if you can tell in the, in the photo, you have an individual trying to level the ladder with his strength rather than using a proper ladder and have another person in the back looking at this, maybe even questioning what's going on with this. Is this proper? And a lot of time we can see it when it's someone else. If you go to the next slide while I'm talking, uh, we can see what other people problems and what they are doing. Right here, this photo shows you got really two people visibly that you can see as a third person that's hidden behind the little uh, icon there. But again, they are observing unsafe practices. And then we always ask, what is wrong with this picture? Right. Well, you've got the ladder that's supported by a door on one end. The door could open or close. Uh, also using a ladder as a platform rather than as a ladder and being supported on another end by something that doesn't look too sturdy there. That's correct. Here we go, next slide. Our course agenda for uh, this, this class is to uh, raise awareness and provide some statistics on ladder safety, uh, thoughts about selecting a ladder, uh, types of ladders, uh, the construction, what the ladders are made of, what type of material, the duty rating, uh, the proper length of the ladder, uh, proper improper use, which we'll be talking about and showing some of those pictures throughout this program, and the storage and maintenance. Yeah, this is great. We're going to cover each of those topics. And what I use like to also say, on this letters are posted letters rules. Uh, sometimes you make it a funny little cart uh, cartoon character showing safe letter usage and improper ways of using letters. I always say for homework, when you go and purchase from Home Depot or either Lowe's or from any uh, comp uh, general store that have letters, look and see if the safety rules posted up on there. Usually the manufacturers of those products always like to stress safety and how to use it properly. And, and Clarence, uh, you know, you reminded me of an important point there. It's not just safety on the job, but off the job too. Lots of people are injured off of work uh, and working with ladders at home. Maybe they don't have a proper ladder and they try to use something that's really not intended for that purpose. Uh, we hope these reminders maybe keep people safe at home too. That is correct. Uh, some statistics. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, the part of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, uh, stated that one out of four falls from ladders took place at 10 feet or less, which makes sense that most ladders are you know, not that tall. And the um, majority of ladder accidents were the result of inadequate training. And then 50% of ladder-related accidents involved individuals carrying items as they climbed up the ladder. Uh, another uh, organization, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, reported that there are about 500,000 ladder accidents each year. Now, this is going to encompass you know, work and home-related type situations. And again, they concluded that a majority of workplace ladder accidents could have been avoided with proper adherence to ladder safety training. And that's what we're going to expound on today, a lot of training, a lot of knowledge and information as well. So we went through the agenda, so keep that mind and focus. Uh, one key is having the right ladder for the job and the safest way to complete the task. We talk about pre-job planning. Uh, we also want to get an idea of some type of different ways that ladders are used, 
just think about the task you're about to undertake. And um, also the proper and safe use of ladders consistent of knowing the different types, sizes, the duty ratings, and the construction materials. All these are very important. Having the proper tool for the job. Yes, sir. In this slide, Clarence, there's some basic questions that'll help determine which ladder to use. Could you go through those for us? Oh, sure. Now, we're going to do work indoors, or outdoors, or both. And again, um, <clears throat> that can apply to work relay or home use. Uh, what jobs would a ladder be used for? Is there a possibility of working around electricity or overhead power lines? How much weight would be on that ladder, including my weight, the twos, materials? These are factors to consider. How about, would a ladder be used to reach other heights? Or how high might that be? And we look at some different uh, selected styles. Uh, what kind of ladder is going to be again? We talk about will be right for that job. Uh, using the wrong style of ladder or simply ignoring the limitation of those ladders equipment, well, it can result in fall or serious injury. I like to throw in there fatalities too. So. That's what we want to avoid. You know, we have unfortunately experienced some fatalities in the pool um, related to ladders. And, uh, you know, one such situation involved a uh, supervisor that went into a room to uh, use a ladder to get some decorations and went in there by himself. And uh, later they found him on the floor and apparently he had fallen from the ladder, uh, hit his head and was not able to uh, um, recuperate from that injury. And that raised another question. We said, if you're going to climb up do not work alone. At least have somebody there with you. That's right. <clears throat> the second step here, you're about selecting the height of a ladder. And we always, as a general rule, we say the highest permitted standing level on a step lever, step ladder is two steps down from the top. And I mentioned step ladder twice because someone would have a, a posted signage saying, do not step beyond this point. Uh, again, I mentioned step ladder the third time. Now, a person standing higher may lose their balance or fall, and that's very easy to do. A person maximum, say, reaching height is approximately four feet higher than the height of the ladder. For example, a typical person can reach a, an eight-foot ceiling on a four-foot four ladder. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, and we have some good photos to show an illustration of that. Now, here's something regarding extension ladders as opposed to the step ladders. Extension ladders should be 7 to 10 feet longer than the highest support or contact point. Uh, so this will allow enough length for proper setup, overlap of ladder, sections, height restrictions are the highest standard level where appropriate extension of the ladder above the roof line. The highest standard level is four runs down from the top. And I just want to expound on that. I used to service companies that were roofers, and this was very critical and very key in that. So again, uh, we'll have some good points to bring out uh, from that standpoint. The weight factor or the duty rating, explain that, Clarence, and how that comes into play when selecting a ladder. Okay, well, we, here was supposed to here allows the design and construct it safely for a specific amount of weight. and. Uh, this is where it come in with different duty ratings because ladders are rated differently according to their grade and type. Um, and of course, the duty rate is defined as the maximum safe load of that ladder. So a person fully clothed uh, with tubes around his waist, materials that he may be carrying up that ladder, uh, again, it will all affect that duty rating because we'll add that up and we'll show you the formula for that as well. Uh, construction materials, what we mean by that is what is the material, what is the ladder made of, what type of material? Um, well, we look at the metal ladders, wood ladders, fiberglass ladders. But uh, again, would a ladder be used near or around electricity? And there are some selection process on that. The final, you know, we talk about the final step in selecting the right ladder. Well, the choice of materials, we talked about that. And of course, um, we, um, the fiberglass, selected wood ladders, it can be used around electricity. Uh, you definitely don't want to use an aluminum ladder around electricity. That's correct. Yep. And that's the point here about metal and wooden ladders with metal wire and uh, working around electricity. 
And uh, another key with electricity, your fiberglass your leathers are usually very good, uh, but you also want to wear your personal protective equipment if you're dealing with electricity. Uh, but now, if you're doing a test like hanging lights or anything like that, or, and you're going to be around electricity, you might want to call a professional or expert, someone that knows what they're doing with that, because, again, uh, this is very serious. Well, that's the second point there. Mm -hmm. If you're working around electricity, then you might need to know something about electricity before you get on the ladder to begin with. That's correct. Now, this slide here is kind of a humorous thing about, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to uh, apply something that's less than its intended purpose uh, using a water bottle in place of a fire extinguisher. Um, that's improper use, but it's also the same with, with using an improper ladder. Uh, in trying to, to take care of a job. And that's what we stress about more of a safety culture, uh, your way of thinking, thinking safely, uh, thinking about that. So when you come and see something like that, well, you can, that tells you a lot about the culture. And there's some changes, significant amount of changes that need to be made. What's wrong with this picture? When we look at this, you can see, uh, of course, we put a little comment here, am I in a hurry to be injured? But you can look at uh, when you get hurt on the job, well, you're sure uh, increasing the possibility of that as well. And you can see that there's some wires hanging from the ceiling. And then, of course, it's not stable. Uh, you stand on top of something that can collapse or tilt over. Uh, and then look at how much roof, uh, how you have to bend over from the overhead. So uh, there's a lot of factors uh, that could be discussed. And Here's another one. <laughs> And, of course, we put the term in there, am I in a hurry to die? Let's say if he doesn't die, he'll really have some serious injuries, and it will affect his social, his family, uh, his social life, his family life, and a lot of other factors can be involved in that. So why not stop and take the time to do it right, safely, and uh, to enjoy a long life? Right, getting the right equipment. Um, that's a, a scene that we do see periodically with different uh, cities and other public entities that might be putting up different decorations and signs throughout the year and uh, using that type of device instead of a bucket truck or a, a proper ladder or something like that that would be able to get up there. That's correct too. Yeah. yeah. And okay, this picture here. Uh, what is wrong with this picture? Chris? Well, yeah. uh, you have a ladder in front of a door. It may not be, it, I don't know if that's just a place they're trying to store it, but even then it's not being stored properly. And then if you were going to go up that ladder, it would need to be secured in some way. That's yeah. correct. Yes, sir. That yeah. looks great. It's um, also in front of an overhead door as well, as well as, well as that small uh, door. So, uh, you know, you would hope that there'd be somebody on the other side of that to be sure that nothing opens up and uh, knocks into that ladder. Yes, sir. Well, of course, this one here. For anyone that's really afraid of heights and there's really no stable footing, of course, this is really uh, this safe way to enter or exit. I don't even believe you have some stomp people would uh, take that chance. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's some uh, details on some of the ladder types that are out there. You know, again, looking at the proper tool for the job. Um, step ladders, extension ladders, uh, platform ladders, a step stool. Even a step stool could be a hazard if it's not being used properly. If you go above the rung that says it's not supposed to be used for, or if you tried to use it on an unlevel surface and it's not balanced. Uh, Multi-purpose ladders, uh, telescoping ladders, and uh, folding ladders. Yes, sir. These are the very uh, good type of ladders that's uh, available on the market. And uh, it's good to just do those ladder inspection, make sure it's the type of ladder that you have uh, perform your job task with. And I always say, also take notes, write down what your, what your job task and the type of letters you're going to need and uh, other information that will be helpful. Because keep in mind, these are excellent training tools, uh, what you record too. You're not just only recording for this particular job, but future jobs as well. And you can share that information, that wisdom with other people. That's a good point, Clarence. Yeah. Now, here where we get into ladder construction. Uh, again, we talk about the wood, the aluminum, and the fiberglass. Uh, basically, you'll see those three primary type of letters right there. Of course, fiberglass, non-conductive, uh, which make a, a good choice when working around electricity. It is also corrosion resistant and ideal for outdoor use. Um, should be made of good commercial grade, 
The thermal setting polyester resin reinforced with glass fibers. Aluminum ladders, of course, are lightweight and it's but not for use with you know if you're going to be working around electricity. And be careful if there's any wire and wiring hanging or, or something like that, and you may be doing another task. Make sure you inspect your work area before you begin your, your job activities. Uh, make sure, let's see, free of sharp edges uh, where it don't cause any cutting or slice or laceration type injuries. And the wrongs, always inspect the wrongs. Make sure that they are. Uh, at the lab, when they come new, they're okay, but make sure there's no one uh, deals on the wrong that will cause your foot to slip or injury, anything like that. But uh, again, look at the ladder wrongs for safety from that standpoint. And that goes with saying, too, the having proper shoes, footwear, uh, that would be non slip if you have those when you're going, working in these type of environments. Yes, right. It's, it's called, uh, again, what we say, our personal protective equipment, the proper footwear. And here, wood ladders. Wood ladders, again, basically, uh, this is non-conducted, uh, which make good choice for heavy maintenance and construction. Uh, a lot of time, um, you got high density wood was constructed of, uh, free of sharp edges, splinters, no decay or irregularities, wrongs not broken or in good condition. Again, we get back into ladders inspection. <laughs> the duty rating, you, you referred to this earlier, Clarence, about having the right uh, job uh, weight limit for the ladder. Right, right. And this right here, this picture show a little bit of how the gentleman is climbing the ladder, but he's kind of leaning backwards. So, you know, a little bit off balance, center of gravity from the standpoint. Um, of course, he had his vest and cap, but like I say, it looked like a, I'm not sure if he's sure of that ladder, if it's stable or not. But anyway, that picture can say a lot of words or bring up, raise up a lot of questions. Now, here where we get into the duty rating. You can see there are different type of levels, like type 3, light duty, 200 pounds. Uh, and of course, you can just see how the rating, based upon the types, increases. But with it, let's say we determine our weight capacity. We talk about our weight, the weight of the personal protective equipment. Uh, you got maybe uh, two with wood handles, two with metal handles, because it may weigh a little bit more. You've got some impact wrenches and some drill motors. Then what's the weight of the tool belt itself? And then you add that all up to total weight, and of course that gives you a duty rating. So let's say you got somebody weigh uh, pretty close to 200 pounds, and they they weigh up something else. And I think we have a good illustration of this. I'll break it down for us. And again, this is this is it right here. Um, type of ladder is needed, type two, and you can see a person weigh 175 pounds, and the weight of the two that he's carrying is five pounds of twos plus 30 pounds he carrying the side. So the total weight is 210 pounds. So what type of letter would be needed for that? So with 210 pounds, uh, you need at least a type two or ladder or a, a type one or one A or, or another type of ladder, but definitely not a type three because that is over, the 210 is over the weight of 200 pounds. Right, he has stated that, that limit. So that's kind of gives you some ideas from that standpoint of what you're looking for and what type of ladders you want to have available based upon the type of jobs. And uh, within cities and within manufacturing operation, uh, we, that's what we say document. If you have that type of information and you know what type of task would be performed, this is helpful in pre-planning that particular job. Now back to a photo of uh, improper or improper use. And here we go on proper ladder length, uh, where you can see with the green arrow check where he has room to climb on top of the ladder, and then he can just almost step off on top on the house. And also when he coming to exit from the house, where you have a, a step ladder, and he has already stepped over the two top runs right there. So you can see the potential falls that can occur. From that well, point. and also that individual is going to have to get back down off that roof, and so he's going to have to put his foot in the right place just to be able to get down there. And that's not a safe thing. That's right. Just that's going right. up or coming back down. It's dangerous. And the fall potential increases as he's coming back down. Mm -hmm. Now, something here on proper ladder length, and I think we we're talking about that in regards to the extension ladders. Um, explain to us the, the four to one rule. Well, we say for every four feet you have to climb, move the base of foot 
away from the wall. So they call this a four feet, one, a four to one rule. So uh, again, the farther distance the ladder is from the base of the building, the longer the ladder must be to reach the same height. Now you know it's it's a little bit more difficult on the math part for me, but uh, the Pythagorean theorem of the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Here's just an illustration of that. Um, if your ladder is uh, it needs to be 25 feet away from the building for the 20 feet in height. So that's uh, you know, for 20 feet you've got four to one, 20 to five, and then if you do the math on that. It's a little bit more than 20 feet, so 21 feet is the length of the ladder needed for that uh, distance to be able to reach that height. That's right? correct. I mean, it's, it's laid out right there. So, uh, yeah, you'll be safely from that standpoint. And I'd like to say you decrease your chance of injury. <laughs> and here's something about <clears throat> step ladders and proper ladder length. That's correct. You can see it right there at the top again. Uh, it can easily lose its balance, fall, and the ladder is not designed uh, for you to step at the very top from that standpoint. And of course, again, we look at ladder size and the maximum standing height. So these are some good statistical information that's available that you can look up, again, to help uh, have safe criteria to go by. And follow those warning labels, and if there isn't a warning label, then you need to refer to some other uh, resource to figure out whether that uh, ladder is appropriate. Yes, sir. Extension ladders are uh, no more than 60 feet high. Inspect and test it before use. And um, again, ladder safety rules, inspection, test it. Those are very critical on ladders before any use. Uh, when you go to retrieve a ladder, even with, again, just about how they storage. Uh, we'll talk about that too from the standpoint. But these are all factors that you do not, uh, should I say, um, get away from. These are checks before, and I like to say checks after use, but especially before. Yeah, check after use would be important too, because then you could, if there is something wrong with it, you can flag it or tag it in some way so that somebody else doesn't use that. Right, right. That's correct. And if there's a repair that needs to be made, it yes, can sir. be uh, set aside in the meantime until that repair is taken care of. Extension ladders. <clears throat> the fly and base sections must overlap approximately. One twelfth of the total working height of the ladder. So you can see that illustration right there, because you want again stay within that because um, you don't want to deviate from the statistic and the proper set of letters. Uh, just think about when you're going on vacation. If you happen to catch a flight to a destination, you do not want that pilot to uh, pass some of the checks that's required on that plane. So same thing. Treat yourself just like that because you're very valuable and important. Ladders must be extended. We talked about that three feet beyond the roof of the line. If you're going to climb onto the structure, it makes it a lot easier to climb onto the structure and to get back on the ladder safely. Yeah, getting back off yeah. the roof. Exactly. And here's an illustration of that. Some people Excellent. that use ladders quite extensively, the firefighters. And this, this says it greatly. Extra footage above the roof allows for safe dismount from the ladder and back, you know, from that point. And let's say as we exit the roof, same thing, just a safe, smooth footage. <laughs> Another picture here related to some uh, maybe additional equipment that might be needed if you're going to be uh, going up certain types of ladders. Yes, sir. You can see uh, safety harnesses, so you can see uh, how they have it. I guess suggested to comfort and provide the safe as they are climbing or here exiting the ladder. But that fall protection is great. It's an additional uh, life safety. And uh, that needs to be inspected as well before use and probably after as well. Make sure that it right, works. Right, yes. Because if, if it's damaged after use, you won't take out service so no one else will risk using that again. Yeah. Uh, proper ladder use, if we say always have a Three points of contact when climbing, and I always say when exit, you want to maintain that three point of contact. And a good rule of thumb is to never let one belt buck outside the upright and always face the ladder. Um, one uh, instructor always tell me, he said, make sure your belly button is between the uh, ladder runs as you're going up the sides. Uh, we talked about, as you point out, wear a slip resistant type shoes or boots, uh, we say with heels. And uh, 
for us, we say, do not carry objects yeah. up or down ladders. It's good to use the rope or uh, tiller line to transport the items. That's that right. makes it a lot safer. Well, that's right. Yeah. You're not able to maintain the three points of contact if you're carrying something. You're that's correct. You have to release a hand or a foot to be able to climb up the ladder, and if you're holding something, that's not going to work. So that goes, uh, they can't work alone in some situations right. like this. With ladders, certainly just to be able to hand up uh, tools and equipment and supplies. Um, also, with you know that belt buckle outside the ladder, that that reminds me of a unfortunate incident where somebody was leaning over on a ladder uh, and to clean a windshield. And apparently, what happened is that individual leaned too far and leaned outside of that that ladder and uh, fell and uh, hit his head and uh, did did not uh, survive that injury. So um, you know that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, don't don't move. Remove your belly button outside from that center where the, the ladder is. That's correct. We hear a lot of cases of that every now and then. Yes, sir. Uh, some additional tools that might help with uh, safety in, around ladders. Mm -hmm. uh, these these will help keep your ladder from slipping. Um, it depends on what type of work that's being accomplished, but um, there are some devices and, and uh, uh, add-ons that can help with ladder safety. Yeah, th these are really good because, uh, like I said. I <clears throat> work with roofers, but you know, through cities, you know, sometimes they may have to go and do something on top of the roof or air conditioning repair. These are excellent tools that help ensure, you know, safe ladder use. I mean, we talk about ladder shoes, feet, uh, those are important to inspect. Make sure that they are in good conditions, and you see one where you can just lock it. Uh, make sure that the rubber is not worn off. Uh, to maintain a proper letter foot level footing level balance, so uh, you can see that. And these are some good illustrations. And I would really encourage emphasis placed right here as well. Uh, no one is more important than us, but you want to make sure that that ladder is stable on the ground. Another photo here. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is very good uh, improper ladder use, and it's totally used for a purpose that it's not designed for. So again, we talk about increasing the potential of injury. And actually, I count three ladders in there. I think there's <laughs> he's standing on one, the bucket, and supported by another one. And I think that might be another ladder underneath that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's using ladders, but uh, not for the intended purpose. That's right. That's correct. Yes, sir. Other improper use photos. And what's good about it is that. Um, you can see it, how people you improperly use it. But now here's the next key. Let's say somebody spot if you're using leather improper, are you open to make that correction uh, as well? Because sometimes we do things that's improper and someone say, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Uh, so a key is that we are in it to help each other. So if you see someone doing something improper, uh, the good approach is to say, I care about your life. I care about your situation. But uh, let me show you a better method, or let's discuss a better method on preventing this injury. And keep our minds open to accept that criticism because it's meant to help. Exactly. Let's see. Um, we talk about ladders uh, in front of door openings. Uh, ladders, unless, unless the door is locked, lock and guard it. So, again, this picture here, uh, you can just see the, the potential there. Somebody comes through on the other side of that door. Um, mm, and they don't know that he's there. Oh, it, it, you, you could just see the potential. And is it at the four to one rule? Yeah, and it's not <laughs> at the four to one rule. That is correct. Photo here of a ladder uh, in a trench or excavation. Yes. And, um, and I also want to point out, too, because we see the improper ladder use. Now, if there's been rain in the area for so many days and it they have rained for about two or three days, Again, the ground may be moist and soaked, and you know you have that ladder there, so you won't get the proper footing and everything from that standpoint. So again, these are factors to uh, consider. But we go back to pre-planting. <laughs> Another example of uh, using uh, heavy equipment instead of a, a ladder or a bucket truck. And it's like this says: it's not a ladder, and it's not safe. It's not safe, and. Unfortunately, we see this every once in a while. Uh, not necessarily what I see this, but we'll see something like that. But even at that point, you want to uh, kind of just politely let the individual know that that, that it might be risking their life. So mm -hmm. you can really help save a life 
uh, same a person from injury. Uh, but like I said, we see this all too often periodically. This picture, well, <laughs> improvise, adapt, and overcome does mm -hmm. not mean you get yourself and a team manager injured or killed. We, we certainly don't want it in a, a negative way. And so there is a much better way than do this. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, too, uh, unfortunately, the witness is something that can potentially hurt the young man. But uh, if we witness something, we want to witness something that can help and, and protect lives of others. Another situation. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we do look at uh, three ladders, and you can just see uh, from the standpoint. But, of course, um, I had a stomp crew that quit on me on that because they wouldn't take that advice right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you couldn't blame them. <laughs> Some other poor choices here with regards to ladders. Uh, individuals sitting on top of the ladder, it's just not just standing on the top two rungs, it would also mean sitting, sitting. or otherwise be above those those two rungs. Exactly. And you see how he's mm -hmm. twisted backward too. So he's putting a lot of pressure on his lower back as well. And like I said, where he's sitting on is not designed for that. So it's a hard surface. And then you can see the other picture where the guy's standing on a bucket, <laughs> on a I guess some type of platform, and yeah. the guy's on the rungs of one top step ladder and on the rungs of another ladder. So you can again see uh, the totally improper ladder usage. And let's see, the most dangerous layers are the ones that's not used and maintained. Now we get it properly. Now we get into some of this, like added ladders. We're going to talk about some storage uh, from that standpoint. Um, added ladders, of course, you know, in the, in the attic, they can dry out. The wood can wear out. And it does it faster because they don't have the, the moisture, the air to help prolong it. And like I said, over a period of time, uh, you, you definitely want to replace it. Yes, that's a good point because a lot of people move into a building or a structure and those uh, attic ladders are uh, already there. Yeah. They don't think about maintaining them or inspecting them, right. especially in homes. Oh, um, that raised some good points yes, there sir. about having the, knowing how old that ladder is and whether it needs to be replaced. Yes, sir. It sure does. Now, again, with the storage and maintenance of ladders, uh, proper storage, and we talk about the maintenance of the ladder, it will stay in the life of a ladder and ensure its safety. And we, I've seen ladders to sometimes transport and maybe left outdoors or in different type of weather environments. And we'll take a look at some photos that are related there. But first, we're going to the extension ladders. I should be hung and uh, horizontally and support every six feet. And of course, um, here is a do not store items on top of ladders. So many times you go into place and there's different type of buckets, debris, equipment, Sometime on top of ladders, and this weakened the ladder. Some other points on storage and maintenance. And one of the keys on ladders, how it knows how they are properly stored. Uh, usually, it's good to have a change around the ladders, keeping from tilting over and falling. Uh, this is, I know it's kind of slanted, and everything like that. It's pretty secure, but some will still put a change around the center part of the ladder from the wall back to the wall to keep it from tilting over and falling. And then some points there about mm -hmm. the types of ladders, you know, the different construction materials. Right. You can't leave them out in the sunlight because the UV rays will uh, damage them, like That's in the case of fiberglass fiber or, or wood. Right. It weakens the, the ladders, yeah. Improper ladder storage, what we talked about again, you can see where that ladder is located. Um, again, over a period of time, and it's outdoors. Well, it's not outdoors, it's outdoors but not in exposed outdoors, but wind can blow through and different temperatures from hot to cold. So a period of time, that uh, lifespan may be decreased. And we talk about clean and lubricate the ladder. Um, keep the rungs and steps free of all dirt, debris. Uh, wood ladders can be treated with a protected coating, and, but not paint it. Not paint it. Make sure you don't paint over that because then you're... Um, could be damaging the integrity of the letter itself. Or you could be hiding and something. You could be that... hiding something as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a good point, Chris. Yes, sir. And transporting on a vehicle, uh, make sure both ends are secure to prevent a uh, ruined shot that could damage the letter. And this brings a point that where I have seen ladders fall off of trucks 
And not only from that standpoint, it created a, a hazard in the road where people had to swear around to avoid the accident. Of course, that ladder is now, it has to be disposed of. Right. Now, something here that uh, is very helpful with uh, even field use, you know, a lot of people have smartphones. Um, they have them with them all the time. And it's a very helpful app from uh, NIOSH, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. So this is a free app. And uh, if you use ladders with any, any instances at all, there's a lot of good tips in here. So um, we have a picture there of what the uh, icon looks like. Um, and we'll have information about how you can go download that for free on a, uh, on a smartphone. But uh, it has a measuring tool. That me that middle picture there is showing how you can use the smartphone to determine that angle, that proper angle for the ladder. And it actually will s uh, sound a noise when it's in or out of range. So um, it will help with that. It will help making sure your ladder is level as well. Um, smartphones can do that. And then it also has uh, other things about ladders, such as what to inspect. You know, in this case, what to inspect with that type of ladder. And they have different ladders represented in the app. So it's, it's a great tool for training and review. Um, if you're going to review something, you're going to be using ladders. Um, or if you want to use you know, something else to help remind uh, crews about the importance of ladder safety, it's a, a lot of good information in this app. Um, here's some additional pictures of that showing what I was talking about with having the right level. Um, it'll make a noise, or you can also see it on the, on the app itself um, as to whether it's in or out of range. So, Clarence, some summary points for today. Okay, before we go to summary points, on the uh, letters, um, <clears throat> the app, everything we discuss is in that app. So, I mean, everything from letter selection, uh, letter types, letter weight, and it's all in that app. And like Chris just emphasized, uh, it's free and it's in English and Spanish. So uh, I would encourage you to just take a look at that app. And I mean, it's very detailed with all the good information everything from that standpoint. So as, as letter summary, we say, of course, uh, you can see how the Gemma is going up and down. Do hold on. And of course, you can see the don'ts there. And um, from the standpoint, <clears throat> you don't want to lean too far, lean too far. Reach, too reach too high, or try to move the ladder when you're on it. Uh, some people might try to move their body in some way or another or have somebody move the ladder when they're on it, but that's not, it, it's too easy to, to lose balance. That's the term they try to use, trying to walk the ladder. That's do right. not do that. <laughs> so, yes. In summary, we're talking about erect on a solid level surface. A solid level surface, uh, you also want to make sure you, the footing on there is good and it can help you to have that solid level surface. Never place in front of the doors unless they are secure. And step ladders, ensure the spreader is locked. And of course, that's, you, you definitely want to lock that. Tile, last top and bottom if no one is available to hold it. So if no one is going to be holding the ladder this and that, you want to make sure it's tied off and secured. Extension it. If we talk about again, we talk about extend three foot above the roof, and use the four to one roof. For every four feet in height, move one foot at the base. But I want to stand on that again above the roof. You can see how the firefighter had easily access to the roof, and when he returned, he had easy access to step on the ladder and come down safely. True and false. True or false? And here's a quiz for everybody. Um, and I invite you to play along. Um, here, the first question, the bottom of the ladder should be placed one foot away from the building for every four feet in height. True or false? Well, we already saw that one. Just read it. False. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, uh, true. I, one, uh, the four to one row. Yeah. Well, I have to yeah. make sure they were paying attention okay. to it. But, uh, it, we just read that too. So uh, again, it, it, the true answer is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladder duty ratings only depend on the weight of the user. Well, I'll give you the correct answer this time, false. <laughs> That's correct, because we want to take care of the uh, tools and other equipment materials that might be uh, right, supported true. by that ladder. Exactly. Uh, extension ladders should extend three feet beyond the roof if you're going to get on the roof. Yes. Yes, true. And uh, next point, you should maintain two points of contact when using a ladder. 
Well, we're not talking about two points standing in football, so it should be three points on the ladder. <laughs> that's right. Three points of contact true. on that ladder. That's matter. true. And a good rule of thumb is to keep your belt buckle inside the uprights and always face the ladder. That, that is true. Uh, some of the resources that uh, were consulted in looking at this program and putting some things together, uh, the American Ladder Institute at LadderSafety.org has lots of good materials, even a free training program. Uh, the app that we mentioned before NIOSH, yeah. from the Centers for Disease Control, uh, NIOSH, um, you can find that there at cdc.gov slash NIOSH slash topic slash falls. It's available for either uh, Google Android phones or Apple phones. And then La Occupational Safety and Health Administration has lots of publications on ladders. Um, the easiest way is if you go to their publications page and then just type ladder or fall in a search engine. And um, you'll even get other topics related um, beyond ladders, but other fall protection, protection issues. So uh, summary, if you see something, you know, spot it and do something about it. Help out your fellow employees um, or neighbors if you're at home and you right. see somebody doing something unsafe um, outside in their yard. Uh, you, you might save a life. And I'd like to add, too, I have been in grocery stores where I see somebody doing something unsafe. And this is a grocery store that you normally shop at. You may want to help the, uh, their associate if they're doing something safe. And, again, the approach of being nice and just show them the proper and safe way of doing it because you want to see them back at the store uh, again, but not injured. <laughs> so a uh, reminder, no matter how quickly a job can be done, there is always time to fall. It doesn't take much time or uh, a wrong situation right. to have a severe incident. And another, another quote here, it doesn't matter how many ladders you have, if you don't know how to use them safely, then it won't, none of them will be enough. That's correct. That's so true. So uh, thanks, Clarence, for all the information that you've provided today. Uh, anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, just a reminder, it may be common sense, but it's, we got to make it a common practice, and that would make good sense. Okay. We th thank you all for uh, watching this webinar. We encourage you to fill out the questionnaire that's going to pop up when you complete it. And uh, remember to always practice ladder safety. And uh, we also want to let you know that we have uh, DVDs and online learning. You come to our uh, website at tmlirp.org, look for loss prevention, and you'll find resources there related to that and other topics related to uh, safety issues um, for monthly safety meetings or periodic safety meetings. And uh, encourage your feedback and review of those resources. They are included for TMLIRP members. So in closing, uh, Clarence, thank you, and uh, thank our audience, and uh, please be in touch for our next webinar. Thank you.